Uh, we're very excited today uh, to host, as well as welcome to the city, U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. As we all affectionately know and call him Mayor Pete, uh, as he arrived on the scene from South Bend, uh, he's a dear friend, a dear colleague, and as a former mayor, he understands just how important infrastructure is to transforming a city. Uh, but most importantly, as he will share with you today, uh, he is one of the great surrogates for President Biden and what he's doing now with the Biden infrastructure plan, which bring forth somewhere around $55 billion to focus on rail, river, road, air. Well, good afternoon, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dustin, to, to you and all of our colleagues at the FAA for the critically important work that they do. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Director Malinowski and all of his colleagues at the airport, both for hosting us and for the uh, very important economic and safety work that you oversee. Uh, I'm so pleased to acknowledge my predecessor, Secretary Slater, uh, who uh, is generous with his uh, time and advice when I come to seek wisdom from somebody who has been in the role and from whom I've learned a great deal. Thank you for your friendship and for your service. <clears throat> and uh, I want to thank uh, Mayor Scott for arranging this beautiful weather. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how it works in uh, Arkansas, but when I was uh, mayor, we were in charge of the weather on good days, and the county was responsible when it was raining or snowing. Um, the mayor and I caught up about his priorities, his focus on public safety, on uh, the future of uh, parks in this uh, community, uh, and on economic growth, and his attention to the economic engine that is this airport is something that uh, I want to echo and acknowledge because that's one of the reasons why we are making these kinds of investments. In fact, talking with him reminded me of my mayor days and one of the things that we had not far from where I lived was a, an intersection that was an accident hot spot where five different roads crossed, notoriously known in town as the five points. And one of the thing, things I was pleased to see on my watch was for that to be removed and replaced with a safer design. Uh, so I couldn't help but think of that when we saw the uh, former five-way intersection over here. That kind of configuration is no more desirable for aircraft taxiing than it is for cars. And that is just one of the things that the airport here has uh, adjusted and addressed with help from federal funds. I think so many Americans are accustomed to the fact that aviation is the safest mode of travel and that U.S. aviation is the safest, most complex system in the world, that it can sometimes go without saying. But we're here to talk about that safety and focus on what it's going to take to sustain it. It's, it is a marvel that a form of transportation that involves flying miles above the surface of the earth in a metal tube at nearly the speed of sound results in millions of Americans being returned safely to earth every single year. And yet it's something that we all but take for granted, and yet we must not. It is the result of decades of hard work from people across the aviation sector, from pilots and flight attendants to engineers and designers to airports and airlines, air traffic controllers and technical personnel, TSA agents and other security personnel, and ordinary citizens, some of whom got into advocacy because they lost loved ones in crashes and have dedicated their lives making sure that no one else will. In recent decades, the aviation community and the FAA came together to do something that might once have been considered preposterous, which was to move to a world in which there would be zero commercial airline crash deaths in the United States. And that is what has been the case for many years going, a phenomenal achievement that we dare not take for granted. And as technology advances and behaviors change and air travel increases, our safety journey has to continue, recognizing that safety is not a destination. It's an ongoing process. It requires vigilance. It requires investment in people. And it requires investment in physical infrastructure, which is why we're here. That need for the investment in the physical infrastructure of our country is what led the president to prioritize infrastructure and get the bipartisan infrastructure law through Congress. And it's part of a bigger investment uh, agenda for President Biden. His focus on investing in America is designed to help rebuild the American economy stronger than it ever was. And it's already working. 16 million more households have access to affordable high-speed Internet. 
Seniors on Medicare and millions more can get insulin now for just $35 a month. And we've seen the creation of 12 million new jobs since President Biden took office, including 800,000 manufacturing jobs, bringing unemployment near a 50-year low in this country. And a cornerstone of that agenda of investing in America is, of course, our infrastructure. We are modernizing everything from roads and bridges to ports and airports so that people and goods can move efficiently and, most importantly of all, safely. And just as we set out to eliminate commercial plane crashes years ago, today we have to eliminate serious close calls as well. While they remain extremely rare, it is a reality that we must confront that in recent months we've seen an increase in the number of those close calls. There are more mistakes than usual happening across the system on runways, at gates, in control towers, and on flight decks. And that is something we must confront proactively, and we are. Again, that means investments in people and equipment. It's why the FAA convened a safety summit recently to refocus America's aviation sector on safety issues. It is why the uh, SAFO, or Safety Alert for Operators, recently went out. And it's part of why we have been proud to provide over $41 million to reduce confusion and risk on this airfield here in Little Rock. And this funding is helping to rebuild Taxiway Charlie to eliminate some of the complicated entries and exits, as well as remove that five-way intersection and prepare this airport for its future needs. It'll help prevent aircraft from mistakenly using the wrong runway for takeoff in an area where the two runways converge at their ends. It's important work that will make this airport significantly safer, and so I was pleased to hear about the completion of Phase 1, the ongoing work on Phase 2, and the visions for Phases 3 and 4. Now, in the past 10 years, we have awarded this airport well over $100 million in federal funding to support things like this taxiway project, like runway safety projects, and expanding the overnight ramp. And thanks to President Biden's infrastructure law, we've been able to award the airport another well-deserved $8 million to help build that central utility plant anew and support future terminal expansion, all while improving energy efficiency by 30 percent, which means savings for passengers and taxpayers. This is funding that is not only making it safer and easier for passengers to get around, it's creating new jobs for this community and protecting those jobs that already exist. Airports are an economic engine for communities that surround them. That's why supporting airports and the workers who run them and the passengers who count on them has been such a priority for the Biden-Harris administration. Now, if we think back to year one, the biggest concern for our aviation sector was whether it was going to stay in business. And in President Biden's first year in office, we helped keep airports and airlines from going under during the worst days of the pandemic, protecting tens of thousands of aviation jobs through the American Rescue Plan. And then air travel in our second year came roaring back faster than even the most optimistic scenarios envisioned. And that's when we helped to ensure that airports and airlines were ready to meet that surging demand while advancing some of the most significant passenger and consumer protections in years. This year and beyond, we're focused not just on recovering from the events of recent months and years, but on positioning the aviation sector for success in the years and the decades to come. That's what our Investing in America agenda under President Biden's leadership is about, setting up the American people and economy for success, replacing lead pipes to provide clean water, cleaning up legacy pollution, leading the way in a clean energy revolution to lower costs and improve national security while fighting climate change, bringing advanced semiconductor manufacturing jobs back to the United States. And every week now, shovels are hitting the ground and dirt is flying on infrastructure projects like this that are going to make our communities safer as well as more prosperous and cleaner. I'll end where I started, which is with aviation safety. Because whether we're talking about planes, trains, or automobiles, safety has and always will be the core of our work at the Department of Transportation. It's a mission that I know every airport, every airline, and every aviation worker in this country shares. And together, we have to continue the work of making sure this, our most complex mode of mass transportation, also continues to be our safest. And I know we will continue working together on everything required to make that happen. So congratulations to Little Rock. You've got a lot to be proud of and no pressure, but I'm looking forward to seeing the successful completion of these projects and many more in the future. Thanks again for having us over.
And with that, I think we have time for a few questions uh, from the media. Yeah. Well, the most important thing is to make sure that there is no impact on typical travelers, and that's our focus every day. Uh, now, these close calls, especially the severe types that the FAA classifies as what they call Category A or B, uh, to be clear, they remain extremely rare. They've happened in the past at a pace of about once per month, but right now we're seeing it almost double that. There's no single place where we're seeing it happen. It's not as if it's just happening in control towers or just happening with pilots making mistakes. It's, it's been everything in the system all at once, just a little bit more susceptible to these issues. Uh, it's why the FAA Safety Summit really focused everybody's attention on getting back to basics and considering new issues that may have come up. Uh, we're still going through data, but it's clear that part of this has to do with that swift return to air travel, which, while good economic news, means we need to keep up on the safety side. Uh, and uh, the biggest thing that I want passengers to know is that we continue to have the safest, most complex aviation system in the world. Uh, but we're not going to take that for granted. And in the same way that we would respond to a collision or a crash, we're going to make sure we respond to these close calls so that none of them turn into a collision or a crash. Uh, yes, uh, our uh, Federal Highways Deputy Administrator has been here to learn more about that vision. I've spoken about it briefly with the mayor, and we'll be speaking about it a little more today. I uh, was pleased to be able to see that funding come to help Little Rock plan for that future. And uh, it's part of our Reconnecting Communities program, which recognizes that situations like this have happened across the country, places where communities were divided, often along racial lines, using federal dollars uh, in these infrastructure projects, which is exactly why uh, a fitting and proper use of federal dollars is to reconnect where there has been that division. Now, a lot of planning has to go into this, and that's uh, why we have these planning grants to help the community align on a vision and prepare it so that in the future it could qualify potentially for construction and implementation support as well. And I'm looking forward to learning more about the details of the vision from the mayor today. All right. Well, we have been working uh, through programs like the airport terminal program to benefit the parts of the aviation uh, system that passengers see and experience, everything from uh, better uh, concourses to upgraded escalator security checkpoints to make it a little smoother to move through the system, uh, even things like uh, restrooms. But so much of what goes into keeping airline passengers safe is things that passengers, for the most part, won't ever see. The condition of our uh, air traffic control towers and the training that goes into the workers who staff them, the computer equipment and the technology, which is going through enormous and costly but needed modernization as we speak. Uh, and that's why we wanted to make sure we came out here today to shine a spotlight on things that uh, we think about and that the airport professionals and air, air aviation professionals you see today worry about every day so passengers don't have to. I don't want when you're uh, sipping your cup of coffee and uh, uh, checking your messages or uh, maybe you've uh, put your uh, phone in airplane mode but you're reading the paper or, uh, or talking to your travel companion, the last thing I want you thinking about is uh, whether there's some uh, design issue with the way the taxiway is set up that makes it more likely on a low visibility day uh, that, that there could be some kind of incident or incursion. I want you to be able to take a nap and for the rest of us to worry about that so you don't have to. That's why we need to be investing in the design that makes it harder for problems to come up in the first place, even while also investing in the human factor, the training for the, for, for the pilots, the crews, uh, the tech ops folks, and the controllers uh, who very much pay attention to, to that every single moment they're on the job. All right. Thanks again for joining, and uh, really look forward to seeing the continued progress here in Little Rock. Take care.